السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد Firstly, I'd, I'd like to say Jazakallah khairan to the organizer of the program. May Allah ta'ala make the program a means of the propagation of an important sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout the world. The sunnah that I'm discussing and talking about today is the sunnah of moon sighting. Um, you can also see on the presentation, I've also included my website and also my Twitter feed. So those of you who may have questions after this, Feel free to get in touch via those means, inshallah. Now, today we're going to be discussing a number of important issues. Try to stick to 10, you know, but these are some of the 10 that will be included. Firstly, discuss, you know, where is this from in the Quran and Hadith? Is it that important? Why can't we just use calculation? Why is, it, why is this issue given so much precedence? Also be looking at what is meant by a sighting. What happens if you don't sight the moon on the 29th? What should you do then? Sometimes people say the moon is too big. That can't be the first. We must have missed the first moon. Then what should we do? What about a day of doubt? You know, what is that? What is the hadith you know, state about that? Then the important principle of certainty and how do we verify sightings? Calculations, can we use calculations? Can't we use calculations? Which type of calculations can we use? Which types can't we use? Then we'll look at different opinions about sightings and what is meant by a horizon or a matla. And then finally we'll be looking at what can we do? Now in the Quran, if we see the ayat of the Quran, there's, there's many on this issue. However, I'll, I'll focus on one or two, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes'alunaka anil ahillah. They will ask you about the crescent moons. Ibn Abbas narrates that, that the Sahaba asked Nabi Salaam about the about, about the crescent moon. The crescent moon is the first moon of the Islamic month. So Nabi Sallallahu was told to, was told to say, These are set times for mankind and for the Hajj. So we can see in the explanation of this mentioned Ibn Kathir mentions that that the way Allah Ta'ala's system is, the way Allah Ta'ala's sunnah of the way the moons are with them increasing and decreasing. This helps people fulfill a number of purposes. You now you can see below that, it says that here, when people's debts are due, so people can calculate after, you know, when the month finishes. When the waiting period for their wives finish or for the women folk finish. And, and the time of when Hajj occurs, people can work out by the system of the Hilal. So we can see here that the Hilal, the system of the Hilal is something which is very, very important and crucial in Deen. If we see in the Hadith, we see one Hadith mentioned by Imam Abu Dawood and Aisha radiallahu anha. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتحفظ من شعبان ما لا يتحفظ من غيره ثم يصوم لرؤيته رمضان فإذا غم عليه عدت ثلاثين يوما ثم صام That is narrated by Aisha رضي الله عنها says that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم used to be particular about شعبان in a way that he wasn't particular about other months so you can see, particular here means making sure that the first occurred properly, making sure that at the end of the month, um, it, the moon of Ramadan was sighted properly. So you can see here the importance of sighting that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yet to have fun. He was very particular about it. And if, if the moon wasn't sighted on the 29th of Sha'ban, then, then 30 days would be completed and then the fasting would begin after 30 days of Sha'ban. We see a hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. 
ان عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذكر رمضان فقال لا تصوم حتى تروا الهلال ولا تفطروا حتى تروه فان غم عليكم فاقدروا له ذا عبد الله بن عمر الله عنه وانا ريتس رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وان اوكيشن منشن رمضان اند هي سيد دونت فاست انتيل يو هاف سايتد ذا مون اند دونت سيليبريت ايد او دونت ستوب فاستينج فروم رمضان انتيل يو هاف سايتد ات if it's cloudy or the or the sky is covered then then complete 30 days and this you can see here how important this is that the sighting is mentioned oh again and again and again and abi huraira radiyallahu anhu and in nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam qad la yataqaddamanna ahadukum ramadan bi sawmi yawmin aw yawmain illa an yakuna rajulun kana yasumu sawmuhu fal yasum dhalika al yawm in this hadith, you know, it's a similar context, but it mentions here that do not precede Ramadan by one fast or two fasts. Some people will say, you know what, we're not sure, so we'll fast one day extra. Now that is completely prohibited. That is completely prohibited and not allowed. A person shouldn't do that. Unless a person already has a habit, maybe someone is fasting every Monday and Thursday and that happens to be the day before Ramadan, then okay, a person continues with that. Or a person is doing some some other kind of makeup of a fast for the previous year, then you know, that person will keep that fast. But generally, just because a person has a doubt, then then they shouldn't fast. And and this explains that further. Ibn Abdul Bar mentions in Tamheed that Samak mentions that دخلت على إكرم في يوم وكان أشك وقد أشكل علي أمره وقد أشكل على أمره أمن رمضان هو أمن شعبان فسبحت صائما. so so this uh, is mentioned on one occasion as Samag narrated that he visited Ikrimah on a day when he wasn't sure whether it was still شعبان or whether Ramadan had started. so he started the day thinking if it's Ramadan then that then he has a pass me by and if it's shaaban it will be like nothing so uh, uh, so he says when he reached ikrama he was eating he was eating some food and he called to me and he said come and eat with me i said i'm fasting he said take an oath that you will break your fast i said subhanallah you will be taken oath that you will most definitely break your fast then he narrates, he says, when I saw that he wouldn't stop taking this oath, I broke my fast and I partook in the meal. And when I was full, I said, okay, give me. Well, you know, you know what are you referring to? He said to me, I heard Ibn Abbas narrate that he heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fast on sighting the moon and celebrate, eat on fasting it. And فَإِنْ حَالَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ سَحَابَ أَوْ غَيَابَ فَكَمِّلُ الْعِدَّةَ And if there is if there is some cloud cover or some covering covering the moon, then complete 30. وَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا شَحْرَ إِسْتِقْبَالًا And do not proceed the month with any fast. Now, now, the, the, now this is important here. Why is this important? Because in Islam we have a principle of of yaqeen. We only start the fast once we're sure it started. We don't start something based on a doubt. I'll explain that further. Another hadith is mentioned that the Umar Radiallahu narrates, In the ahilleta ba'uha akbaru min ba'd. Fa'idha ra'aytu muhu ba'd ma tazulu shams fa huwa lillaylati al-mustaqbir. It says the crescents, some of them are bigger than others. What does this mean? That means that the first of Ramadan, the moon might be slightly bigger or smaller than the moon that's the first of, Sha of Shawwal or the first of Dhul Hijjah. And you can see here, I've got some pictures here of different sightings in Australia, in Hungary, in UK and Morocco, you can see some of the moons are clearly bigger than other moons. But these are all moons of the first. So we should never think that, okay, that moon looks big, that moon looks 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 small. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ بَعْدَ مَا تَصُلُوا فَهُوَ لِلَّيْلَةِ الْمُسْتَقْبَلَ So if, if you sight the moon, then you should always think, what date was it yesterday? 
Yesterday was the first and today is the second, whatever the size of the moon. If yesterday was the third, then, then tomorrow will be the next day after that. And that's how we work it out. We don't use size because that can cause doubts. Also, if we see the moon, we see that it's only possible to sight them about 18 hours after the moon is actually born. Some, some places may see it on 18 hours, but other places will only see it after 30 hours or 32 hours. So obviously a 30 hour moon is much bigger than an 18 hour moon. And that's what we can see in, the, in these pictures here. Another hadith which mentions a, a similar thing. So Ibn Abdul Bakhtari mentions that we were, so Abu al Bakhtari mentions that we were traveling for Hajj and we came to a clear plain. Then we saw the Hilal of Dhul Hijjah and it looked like the fifth moon. So we got to Ibn Abbas and we asked him about it. He said, Allah Ta'ala made the crescent to set the time. You should fast on sighting the crescent. Once you've sighted the crescent, then you shouldn't worry about the size of it afterwards. Once you've sighted it, once it's appeared, then that's what, when it starts. And you stop fasting once you sight the moon again. So again, you can see here that the size of the moon is not something that we should become doubtful about. Now the question is, what do you mean by sighting of the moon? Now, he, he mentions one definition of that. That this is the valid, actual, physical sighting of, of the moon. So sometimes people say, no, no, it was sighted, you know, it, it, you know we, we calculated it. But that's not an actual sighting. Sometimes people use something called CCD imaging. Now, I don't want to go into detail about that, but as the name suggests, this is imaging done using a device of the moon. This is not actual sighting of the moon. So therefore, this wouldn't fit that definition either. Ashiyat, and it's done in the evening after Maghrib. So if someone says they saw the, saw the moon at Zawal time or in the afternoon, then that wouldn't be valid. Even if it was with, you know, other means, because a valid society of the moon is after Maghrib. After when? Bad the Ishtima and the Khamar Bishams. After conjunction. After, you can see in this diagram here, the first junction occurs when the sun, the, the moon, and the earth is in one line. That is conjunction. After that, the moon travels a little bit. After it's traveled for a few hours, some say at least 15, 16, 17, 18 hours, then the moon becomes visible. When it's visible, then it has come out from the sun's rays. Therefore, it can be seen. So when this occurs, then we will accept the sighting of the moon. If people say they've seen the sighting in the afternoon or they've seen it, um, you know, whilst the moon is still dark, then again, these things are not valid. And this is part of the important principle of, of mentioning the Quran. That, that we don't let uncertainty remove any doubts from us. So, for example, if a person has a doubt about his wudu, he's not sure, you know, had my wudu broken or maybe it's not broken, then as long as he remembers that he made wudu with certainty, then he will continue. He will continue performing uh, salah or reading Quran or doing whatever he needs to do with his wudu. Now he will only stop that if he is certain that he has broken his wudu. Same thing with Ramadan. We won't start Ramadan until we are certain that, that the moon has been seen. Now, how can we be certain? Now, firstly, uh, firstly, we, we see this paper written by Dr. Salman Sheikh. He mentions two, two things that the, the ulama you know, mentioned. One is group sightings. If group sightings occur, then this stops people making mistakes. Because even honest people can make mistakes. Sometimes a, a mistake, you know, someone might see some cloud that's shaped in the in a way of, 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 of the hilal that could happen, or some smoke. These things can easily happen. 
if we see one occasion, this this occasion this is mentioned in Tantawi, it's mentioned also in the Masalik, which is which is a commentary on Muat Imam Malik. It's mentioned the uh, narration where Anas ibn Malik on one can kind of, uh, occasion when he was very old, he claimed to see a crescent moon when people around him didn't see it. Now. Now, so, so, so one person told him, go and wash your face. When he washed his face, he removed the hair that was, that was in, his, in his line of vision. He was confusing his hair to be, to be the crescent moon. So again, it can happen. So when people, when people have sighted the moon, or people say they've sighted the moon, it's important we verify that, we check that, we make sure it's certain. Another principle is a principle of Jama Rafi, requiring a large number of witnesses. So we see according to Imam Hanifa, Imam Malik and Imam Ahmad that they required a large number of witnesses yeah, for, when the sky was clear. Now Imam Shafi accepted one witness for Ramadan and two for Eid. So, so, so you can see here that having a large number of witnesses this is great because then, then, then we, we know we're absolutely sure about something. Okay? Now Imam Shafi'i, although he doesn't mention um, about having a large number of witnesses, but he's, he, he only accepts local sighting, you know, for, uh, for, a, for just the, the travel distance for shortening prayers. Imam Abu Yusuf rahimullah on the well, it was Qadi al Qudha, and he, he mentions that he required more than 50 people in Baghdad to cite them before he accepted it. And we see countries where they have large sightings, large groups of people citing. We see that that almost every single time the citing matches the data, the scientific data that tells us when the or when the moon will be in the sky. Places where there isn't Jama Ghafir or large number of witnesses as it is, then we see quite often that their sightings do not match the scientific data on when the moon sh should occur. Now the question is about calculations. Firstly, we should all agree that the most important thing is physical sighting. Sighting of the moon is a, is a shi'ad, is an important practice of our deen. We shouldn't replace sighting with just calculation or, or yearly calendar. But there's certain things we can use calculations for and certain things we can't use calculations for. So we can use calculations to tell us when the moon was born. We can use it to tell us the age of the moon. So we know if it's, is it, is, is, you know, was it likely that the moon should be sighted or not? when it will be visible so we can use the data to see okay the moon is can be sighted in this area at this time also it will tell us the shape of the moon because the shape of the moon in the northern hemisphere is different to that in the southern hemisphere so if someone sees if they've seen the moon and they've seen the wrong shape of the moon then that's a, then that's an issue also we can see which places can sight the moon on the same day now Calculation can tell us those things, but what can't it tell us? And, and this is why we need observation and sighting. Because it doesn't actually tell us weather conditions. We don't know if cloud cover will block the moon at just the time when it was you know, possible to see. We don't know if there's physical impediments. Maybe there, there's a building there, maybe there's, a, there, there's some smoke, there's a fire. There could be anything blocking the sighting of the moon. So these things are all possible. Now, if we see in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala is the one who made the sun a source of light or a glow. And he made the moon a, a light as a reflection from the sun. And he determined for it stages. So that you may learn the number of years. So how do we know if it's one year or the other through the, through the stages of the moon? And also so that you can know the calculation of time. Allah didn't create all this in vain. He created it with a purpose. 
يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون. He elaborates the signs for people who understand. This is Allah Taala's Sunnah. This is Allah Taala's system, having stages of the moon, and we can see how the scholars have used that. So we see, for example, here this is a, this is a, this is um, a visual representation of of new crescent visibility. Now we can see here this allows us to work out when the moon can be sighted or not. So this is this is a calculation for Muharram 1442. We can see here where the moon can be sighted easily. The green area, where you can see what is possible to sight it in in pink or magenta, and when we see that it's it's you definitely need um, an optical aid, or it's not possible at all after that. So you can see different stages here. Also, this system, the these calculations can tell us what's possible. So we can also see that that we can also see. So for example, here um, we can see here. So if north, if if north. Africa has seen the moon, then we can follow that through, and we can see who will see it next. It allows us to work out lots of things, and again, this is these are as mentioned. You fortunately call me ya alamun for people who know, people understand this science. For them, they can use this information. But remember, as I said before, calculation should never replace actual observation. Now, what are, what are the opinions on moon sighting of the ulama? Can we use the sightings of other places, or can't we use? So there's two main views views here. One is that of ikhtilaf al matari. So scholars of this opinion believe that different horizons must be factored in when considering an observation. That means that, for example, um, one place shouldn't take the sighting of another place. So, for example, Imam Bukhari mentions a chapter in his in his, in his in his jamin, he mentions Likulli Balid in Royatu that every city would have a sighting of its own. Now, so, so, so that, 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 that was his view, and that's the view of many, many scholars. Another view is Ittihadun Matali, that actually there's no, we shouldn't really consider different horizons. If we get news from anywhere, then we can accept that sighting, we can start fasting on that day. We, we can accept that as the first of the month. Let's look at some of the evidences for that. Before we do that, understand what is meant by the horizon. So, so the term matla comes from the verb tala'a, means which is to rise. Yeah, it's a it's a place now referring to the place of the rising of the moon. So places that sight the moon on the same day are considered to be one matla. Places that sight the moon on different days have different matali or horizons. Some, some scholars have defined matla with political borders yeah, or with a set distance. Some people have said, okay, one matla is only for the distance of travel. So if travel, we say travel distance after 54 miles, then a person becomes a musafir. So therefore, we can only accept sighting from people within that distance. But this doesn't really fit with the literal definition of a matla. But, but whatever the case, um, so we see the so the fuqaha we've got two groups of fuqaha. One of them will accept will accept sightings from other localities because they say we can accept sighting from anywhere, and others say no, we can't accept it from anywhere, and we should only have local sightings or sightings in one place. What are their proofs for this? So we see the, the as hadith mentioned. I'll, 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 I'll summarize it. That, that on one occasion, that that Ghumma alayna hilal shawwal, that the Sahaba mentioned that the moon of Shawwal was hidden from us, so we didn't see it. That shows us that there wasn't reliance on other places. Even according to some narration, even if they accepted sightings from other places, there wasn't a reliance. Every month they went out to sight the moon. So there was Ghumma alayna hilal shawwal. For us, siyaman. So we woke up in the morning and we fasted. So ja arakum in akhir al nahar. So and and then and then towards the end of the day, a, a group of travelers came, and they and, and they t gave testimony to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they saw the hilal last night, yesterday. So then the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, 
Okay, break your fast today and, and tomorrow you will perform your Eid Salah. Now this hadith is very sahih, it's mentioned in Bukhari, in Muslim, in, 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 in lots of the books of Hadith. So you can see here that there's a number of lessons here. Firstly, that the Sahaba looked for the moon for Shawwal first. They didn't just wait for news. Secondly, when they got news from outside, then Nabi Sassim accepted the testimony. And he told people to break their fast. So this, the, the people who, who, who say we can accept news from elsewhere, they use this as a proof. Obviously, there, there are some um, diff, difficult to compare in this to now, because in those days, you know, how much would it be possible for people to travel in, 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 in a day? In maybe 12 hours, people would travel maybe, say, 200 or 300 kilometers at the, you know, if we're talking about very, very fast, you know, um, you know, means of travel. But, but it's not like today where one phone call can take place between thousands of miles for one place. And so it is very different to that. However, this is still a valid evidence for people who say that we can accept sightings from elsewhere. Now the other hadith, which is used by people who say that every city should do their own sighting. And this is the hadith of Quraib. Am akhbarani Quraib anna umm al-fadl bint al-harith ba'athathu ila mu'awir bisham. Qala, fukhadimtu al-sham, fukhadaytu hajataha, wa stuhilla alayya hilalu ramadhan, wa ana bisham. Fukhayna al-hilal laylatu al-jum'ah. Okay, so Quran mentions that, that the Umm al fadl sent him to Muawiyah, who was at the time based in Sham. He says, he got to Sham and, and he got there at a time when the, the moon of Hilal was sighted. And he says, we saw the Hilal on the night of Friday, which is Thursday night. Then I went to Medina at towards the end of the month and Ibn Abbas anhu, he asked me about it and he mentioned the Hilal he said so I said we saw the moon on Thursday night he said did you see the moon on, on Thursday night he says so I said, um, as, as it is, it says, that the people saw it. In another narration, it's mentioned, Na'am bora'ahunna. I saw it, and the people saw it. Wasamu wasamu mu'awiyah. The people started fasting, and mu'awiyah fasted. Ibn Abbas taught the important principle. He said, Lakin ra'aynahu laylata sabd. We saw it on Friday night, or the night of Saturday. So we're going to continue fasting until there's 30 days or until we sight the Hilal. So I said, فَقُلْتُ أَلَا تَكْتَفِي بِرُؤِيَةِ مُعَاوِيَةِ Yeah, isn't the Ru'ya of Mu'awiyah a great Sahabi of Rasulullah enough for you and Sposiyami? He says, قَالَ لَا He says, it's not enough for us. هَكَذَا أَمَرَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم This is what we've been commanded to do by Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So we can see here that the people of Medina at the time of Ibn Abbas did not accept the sight that came from another place. And this is Ibn Abbas, who was a great Sahabi of Rasulullah, he was expert in tafsir, expert in Quran, and he wouldn't accept, he wouldn't accept sighting from elsewhere. So this is, this is again a very strong evidence for people who say that that different horizons, every horizon should do their own sighting. We also see um, another, uh, another important event. If we see these two events where we're sure about the days and the dates. For example, the day of Arafah during the last year of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's been agreed that the day of Arafah was on a Friday. That was very, very clear. Also, it's known that Nabi Sallallahu passed away on a Monday. So two important days we know. We know that the day that Rasulullah Sallallahu passed away was a Monday, and the day 
that the day of Arafah occurred during the farewell Hajj was a Friday. Now the problem here is that the scholars mention that that's not possible. That if if the day of Friday, if the day of Friday, this explains it clearly. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole text. I just want to explain it clearly using this diagram. So look here, I've mentioned a number of situations. Number one, two, three, and four. So, so we know two things. First thing we know is that um, a day of Arafah during the farewell Hajj was a Friday. That we know. We also know that that Rabi al Awwal, that Nabi Sassan passed away on a Monday, and it was a 12th of Rabi al Awwal. So that, that was a that was a Monday. Now, now, now there's a question that arises: that is that possible? So if we see if we see Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, Safar, all had 30 days. Then, if we accept that Friday was day of Arafah, then 30, 30, 30 would mean that the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal would be on a Sunday, which means that's, that can't be the case. What happens, and look at situation number two, that Arafah happened on a Friday, but there were 20, all the three months were 29 days. If that occurred, then Rabi'ul Awwal, then the 12th Rabi'ul will be a Thursday. Again, that's not possible. Now, what about if, if one month had 29 days and two months had 30 days? If that happened, then Rabi'ul Awwal, the 12th Rabi'ul Awwal would be a Saturday. If uh, that's, that again, that's not possible as well. If two months, had 29 days and one month and 30 days, then the 12th Rabi'ul Awwal would be a Friday. In all these situations, we've got a problem here that we know two dates. One was in Arafah, which was a Friday. One was in Medina, where the demise of the happened, and, and that was a Monday. But when we count up the days, it doesn't work out right. So, so what is the answer for that? And this is where Mullah Ali Khali Rahimullah mentions in his book, in, in Jamal Wasail Fi Shara Shamail, he mentions that as the only answer for that would be if, if the, the people of Mecca had their own sighting and the people of Medina had their own sighting. So when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Mecca, he followed the sighting of the people of Mecca. When he went to Medina, he followed the sighting of the people of Medina. So we can see clearly here that the people of Mecca and the people of Medina did not follow one sighting. So therefore when people say we should, everyone should follow one sighting, then that wasn't the case there. And also some people say that Eid al-Adha should be should be in one place because it's, it's connected with Hajj. It has no relationship with Hajj. You, as you can see from here, the people of Mecca and Medina celebrated it separately. They had no reason to celebrate it, even though it was completely possible. Because there's 10 days from beginning of the month of the Hijjah until Eid. So they could easily send a, a, you know, a messenger bird or, or a fast traveler to travel, but that wasn't the case. The Kulli Balad in Ru'yatu Every city having its own site meant exactly that. So the people of Mecca did their sighting, people of Medina did their sighting. And if we see in history, we see the same was true of the different Khilaf. Okay? Now we see Umar al Anhu, it's, it's mentioned on one occasion that he sent a letter to his governors. He said to them, it's a fast on sighting the Hilal and celebrate Eid on, on sighting it. If you don't see it, then complete 30 days and fast and celebrate Eid. Now, now what happened was, Oh, a group of people came to him and said, Ya Amir al-Mumineen, inna nasun bayna al-jibal. 
that we are a group of people that live in a mountainous region. That we don't see the moon when other people are seeing. So what do you command us to do? Fast from one sighting to another sighting. So if, it's, if, if the moon is hidden for you, complete 30 days. You can see here, despite the vastness of the kingdom of Umar, and these people are saying that they know other people are, are seeing the Hilal before, but still Umar told them that to follow their local sighting. And this, you can see this is an important principle of a different, different Khulafa and a different governments of, state, of, of, of Islam as well. So what have we said so far? The Hadith of Quraib and the final year of Rasulullah shows that it was never considered a priority of the people of Medina and Makkah to have Eid on the same day. Every state had Eid according to their own sighting. So Sham had Eid according to its own sighting and Medina had Eid according to its own sighting. During the life of Nabi Wasallam, no priority was given for even Makkah and Medina to unify the sightings of the moon. Even at the time of Umar anhu, there was no evidence that he asked any different cities to unify Eid. The, the question then arises as to whether we should be considering the Hilal of other places. The narration of the, tra of the travelers whose testimony was accepted is however a proof for those who, who say we should accept sightings from other places. So again, we've got two views here, but we can see here that you know that both these views, both the proofs used by both views, shows that everyone went to sight the moon, even if they accepted the sighting from somewhere else or not. They they all accepted and they all went out to sight the moon. So what's the solution then? The solution is that every the twelve months of the year, we go out and look for the moon. We use astronomical calculations to help us say where is the moon, tell us what time we can see the moon, however we go and see the moon. And this is an obligation that we all need to go and do. And also this is something that we need to give our children good memories of, of Eid and sight in the moon, give them memories of Islam. Nowadays Eid, our children will only remember what food they ate or who they visited. When will our children, if we don't have the sunnah, when will they remember that on the night of Eid, my parents, my father took us out, we went to sight the moon, we saw the moon. These are important sunnah, and these are things that will continue in families. And we need to sight the moon every single month. Not just, I don't know, we see sometimes in Ramadan, everyone goes to sight the moon, or for Dhul Hijjah, everyone goes to sight the moon. Every single month, this is a shi'ar of our deen, this is an important part of Islam, important part of our history, and something that we should try very importantly to do. Now, I'm affiliated with Wifaqul Ulama UK. Now, we have systems that other countries can easily use. For example, we have a group of crescent chasers. These are people that we have registered previously who are, who, who have, who are experienced sightings of the moon. So therefore when we sight it, we can, we, we can take that information very, very quickly. We also have contracts with different countries. So we have contracts with a, agreements with France, Morocco, South Africa, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Reunion, Panama, Grenada, USA, Holland, Nigeria, and many other countries. We have contacts from Australia right up to South America. So we can see, we can get information very, very quick, quickly from other places to see whether, whether the Sunnah of Allah Ta'ala is, you know, is occurring after the sighting of a, of a moon. And we see that regularly. Once Australia sees it, then other places see it afterwards. Also, we share that data every month. So again, if, 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 if countries want that information, they can find that information on our Twitter pages. Every month, we would have the astronomical data about what's possible and when it's possible to sight the moon. 
Also, we meet immediately after sunset in the UK, and we announce a decision to the public about the sighting of the moon. So therefore, there's no waiting around. People don't have to wait for long once a sighting is seen. So this is our system, and we encourage, you know, now you've got your, you've got your local ulama as well, to come up with your system. And the most important thing is to re-establish a sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everyone go and sight the moon. That is the important principle that, that, that we want to get across. Then afterwards the ulama can decide whether other sightings from other countries and which countries are accepted, whether they accept sightings from people within a horizon or not from a horizon. And that's up to them. And that's something that we can look at. If there's any questions or anything like that, please feel free to get in touch. And inshallah, um, after this presentation, you know, there will be an opportunity for that, inshallah. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين